Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can retime your titles inside of DaVinci Resolve 18 so that it can be a longer duration than you originally designed it for. So let me quickly show you what I mean. If we go to frame zero here and I hit play, we see we have a little fade in, and if we go towards the end, I have basically the same thing in reverse. But what if we want the title to be a little bit longer? Well, with the node I'll show you in the video, you can just take the edge here, extend it to a further point in time, and it will adjust the keyframe timings to the new duration of your clip. You may also notice a lot of the titles built into Resolve have the same functionality. For creating a title from scratch, I'm just going to put a new fusion composition onto the timeline right about here. And what I'm going to recommend is that you start off by shrinking your fusion composition to the shortest duration that you might want the title to be in because if you try to shrink a title below what its keyframe stretcher settings were set up for, like this, so I'm making it less than five seconds now, is that it makes your effect kind of messy. Like you can see here, it just disappears before it's supposed to fade out rather than actually doing the fade out. So for that reason, for this fusion composition, I'm just going to start by shrinking it down to two seconds, and then I'll have a one second fade in and one second fade out, and then I can just make it whatever duration above that I want it to be in the future. So I'll take the Fusion Composition. Let's go over to the Fusion page at the bottom. With the Fusion Composition node, the only node you'll have starting out will be the Media Out. So we just need to give it some inputs. I'll start with a Text Plus node. And then let's connect this to Media Out and port our text to what we want it to be. So just type the name of the node on the screen there. Let's change the font, increase the size so that it fits our frame better. If you want, feel free to change the color and whatever other changes you want to make. So here I'll even add in a black shadow on the shading tab. So this time, let's have the text move above the screen to the middle section. So what I'll do is go one second of duration into the timeline. Since the timeline is 60 frames per second for me, that means 60 frames is one second in. By default, you might have 30 frames per second. So I'm going to go to the Layout tab, and I'm going to keyframe the center X. And then let's go to frame 119, the end of our defaults. And let's pull this all the way down here. Then let's go to frame zero and make sure that it starts off above our video frame. And the animation would just look like this. So it's going to slide onto the screen, get to the middle section and keep going. But with our keyframe stretcher, we can make it take a pause at the 60 frame marker. So I'm going to right click in front of the text plus node, and then I'm going to go to add. And then we're going to go down to miscellaneous and keyframe stretcher. So the keyframe stretcher node needs to know the duration of our base clip, which is 120 frames automatically filled in there. So our source start is zero. Our source end is 120. And the stretch start is going to be the frame where your initial animation has finished. So the lead in or where the text comes onto the screen. And we know that's at frame 60. And then our stretch end is going to be one frame after that at 61. So let's go ahead and put that in, save it, and let's go to the edit page and try playing the animation, and then we will expand it. So as you can see here, it doesn't take any time to stop in the center, but if I hit A to go to selection mode and we expand this clip, let's give it a shot and see if it stops there in the center, and it does. So a couple more things I wanna point out if we jump over to the Fusion page about the keyframe stretcher. Uh, one is the keyframe stretcher is going to change any of the animated components that come before it. So if you have other nodes here that also have their animation take place in the keyframe stretch and the keyframe end, then those other clips are also going to change their timing in accordance with this. So if we go to text plus and we add, let's say, a brightness contrast node in front of it, and I'll just make sure that's connected up, then now the brightness contrast node can also be affected by the keyframe stretcher. If you don't want a animation, something you keyframe, to be affected by the keyframe stretcher, just make sure it comes after it on the node graph, but before media out, and it won't be impacted by the keyframe stretcher. So let's say at frame 60, we're gonna keyframe the gain here, and we're gonna keyframe the lift. So if we take a look at the keyframe stretcher, our stretch start ends at 60 frames, and our stretch end starts at 61 frames. So any changes we make after frame 61 are gonna move their timing along with whatever we set up here. But you gotta note that the source end is important. So if you've already expanded your clip 
to more frames than it was originally designed for, then make sure you're setting your keyframe at the end here for the ending animation. So that's frame 120. I'm going to click on brightness contrast and I'm going to increase the lift here. So now when we want to set the ending point for our animation, we want to keep in mind what we set up for the keyframe stretcher. So on the keyframe stretcher, you can see we set the source end for 120. So that should be where I'm ending my animation on the brightness contrast node. We already expanded the effect on the edit page to be longer than that. So our duration right now is like three seconds, but we want to put the end point at 120 frames here because that's what the keyframe stretcher says for the source end. So brightness contrast, I'm going to click in here and let's just raise the lift. So on frame 120, if we increase the lift, we may not see anything occur here if we're looking at media out because the effect has already been retimed by the keyframe stretcher. So if I go further, then we'll see the actual effect occur, even though we set the keyframe at frame 120. So what might be a good idea is going back to the edit page and making sure that this is set to the original duration of two seconds so that when we're back on the edit page, it'll look correct. Otherwise, you can show the brightness contrast node before it gets to the keyframe stretcher by left clicking on the views and that should show the appropriate timing as it was originally designed so in any case go back to the point in time where you wanted to make that keyframe change and you're going to set the lift to 1.0 uh, which is going to just make the screen go all white and let's also go to frame zero here and i'll set the gain the gain is going to affect the text so i'll set that to zero so initially the text is going to appear very dark before it gets to frame 60. and now if we go over to the edit page and we hit play We'll see dark text and then it kind of fades the whole screen to white but if we stretch the timing now to something like this then now we'll have that gap period so there's the first 60 seconds the gap period and the fade to white and so as you can see you can use the keyframe stretcher with multiple effects but once again if you do want any effect to not be readjusted by the keyframe stretcher just make sure it comes afterwards on the timeline it will only be readjusted if it is part of what comes in as the input to the keyframe stretcher. And so that's basically it for how you can create effects inside of Resolve and then retime them with the keyframe stretcher nodes so that if you decide that this needs to occur over a longer period of time, it's really simple. You just resize this to whatever duration you want. And that's pretty much all you need to know. So I've been Chris. I hope all of you enjoyed this Fusion tutorial. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.